Hey guys, this is day 17 of uh, Vlogmas of December 2017 and um, I thought that I would uh, do something a little bit different for today's Vlogmas since I'm not actually doing a whole lot, there's not much to talk about. So I thought that I might um, kind of take this moment to share with you my reading space uh, since that is primarily why I started in this channel in the first place was so that I could kind of have a platform for expressing myself uh, in regards to tarot and oracle cards and witchcraft and that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I thought I would give you a tour of my reading, shall we call it a table, and um, how and where I store my decks. So, yeah, come with me on this little adventure. We're going to start with the surface of my reading table and just give you an idea of how I've got it set up and things like that, and then I will... Um, pause the video there and I'll set up a little tripod to show you guys the inside of my reading table and just how I've sorted my decks. So we start here on the table, uh, just above it. Um, I have a couple of things on the wall here, a beautiful poster of Isis, the goddess, the Egyptian goddess, um, a reading, uh, like a spread uh, that came along with my ancient feminine wisdom deck. Um, but I've never actually attempted the reading. I just really love the uh, beautiful image there of um, of this goddess uh, in the wheat field and with the flowers. And uh, I just like the colors. It goes quite nicely with my Isis poster. And um, I think it's a good way to kind of um, draw attention to the space. Then I have my Metaphysical Adept uh, certification. So... Um, this uh, says that I have successfully demonstrated their abilities and completed the necessary coursework in um, the lunar phases, uh, tarot, crystals, and chakra work. That's what the four images in the corners refer to. And then I found this at um, the Spirit Halloween store, and I just thought it was perfect. So let's start from the left um, and work our way over because, you know, left is right and right is wrong, right? <laughs> Not literally, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll do it in the, the Western reading fashion. And I'm just trying to fix this bird is not wanting to stay on my tree. There we go. That's better. So, um, I have this little light up tree, which the batteries are currently dead on, um, and I have two little bird Christmas ornaments that actually stay on this tree year round. Um, next, I have uh, my Empress tarot candle, and I got this again at the Spirit Halloween store. Uh, it was very cheap, and I thought it was an excellent little uh, thing to have on my reading table and I plan next year um, if they decide to come back to town or if I end up being someplace that has one of those stores I'm going to grab the rest of the series candles that they have there was only a couple others I think there was the Emperor and the Magician or maybe it was the Magician and the Fool I can't remember but I'll grab whatever ones they have um, I have four of these little tiles uh, moon phase tiles so we've got new moon we, uh, waxing Crescent, First Quarter, and uh, Waxing Gibbous. Whoops, I guess it helps if those are in the, the shot there. And um, people keep asking about these. I made them myself. Um, they are just a bit of Sculpey that I rolled into a ball and then flattened. You can kind of see my working marks on the back there. And um, it's just a little bit of, uh, I baked them and then painted them with a little bit of acrylic paint. Uh, nothing fancy, just a bit of white and gray mixed together, and um, then I painted the crescent over top. So for all, with the exception of the new moon, I painted the full moon on them first, and then I added um, the uh, black over top after, since the black covers so well. I'll show you the other four when we get to the other side. I've got a deer antler which was uh, reclaimed it was found in the woods um, and I bought it at a vintage shop uh, somebody had um, I purchased it from like an estate or something like that and that person had reportedly found it in the woods on a walk um, it is drilled in the bottom because it was hung up at one point um, and there's another hole there as well 
I've got a um, abalone shell and some cedar, sweet grass, and sage bundle. A little incense holder. There's um, some amethyst, a labradorite, and then this is a stone from the Grand Canyon. My aunt and uncle went there quite recently and um, my request was to bring me back a rock and she kind of snuck it. because Technically you're not supposed to take them out. <laughs> Oops! Um, this is my working reading candle. It is lit for every single reading that I do at this table for other people, as well as the big ones for myself. If I'm just doing little one card draws, I don't bother to light the candle, but I do for everything that I consider a larger reading than say, maybe three cards. Uh, there's some blue kyanite with my um, uh, Morgan oil blend that I purchased from uh, Crystal at Power Femme. And um, as you can see, once it's mixed up, mixed up, it is blood red, almost black. I love it. It smells amazing. Um, and I anoint myself or candles with it whenever I'm going to be doing uh, magic uh, with or for the Morrigan, whenever I want to invoke her. And sometimes I apply it as a perfume on my inner wrists and the back of my neck or my... Um, my earlobes, uh, when, like my pulse points, when I feel like I need that extra bit of Morgan strength. Um, I've also got this seer stone, which I purchased from an Etsy shop a few years ago. And um, it's supposed to be meant for scrying, because um, as you can see, it's frosted on the outside and then it's clear on the inside and it's been polished. Um, but I never really actually used it for scrying. I like to hold it more or have it as a representation of divination on my reading table. This is a Christmas cactus that um, I've had for a few years now. I think it's going to be, need to be repotted later this year. It's getting a little bit big for this little pot. Um, but for now, it's here. Um, it's just a beautiful reminder of life and cycles of it and things like that and I like to have it on my reading table although I think when I repot it it's going to need to go somewhere else. Uh, this is a um, Nag Champa candle. Um, it's like a votive I think and I've put it in a small candle holder. There's some tiger's eye here and a very pale, it's like a smoky amethyst. Let me hold it up to the window. So you can see there's almost no purple color to it at all on the camera. You can only just see it in person. So it's like a smoky amethyst quartz. This is um, a piece of obsidian. Oh, this got moved. Ack! <laughs> so we've got... Uh, oops, wrong direction here. my tea. Okay, sorry, we'll, we'll do that in a minute. Um, this is a uh, cow's jawbone, and I got this off of a local Facebook bidding wars group. I have no idea how it was collected or anything, but it does appear to be quite old. Um, I have the other half on my main working altar, and uh, for me it is a representative, representative of death and destruction and decay and um, you know, also some of the permanence that comes uh, in, you know, the bones. It can take a long time for bones to decay. So, um, yeah, I use it as a, as a focal point, as a representation. I have my Dark Goddess statue, which I also made myself. This is just some more Sculpey, baked, and then painted. Um, and I have a Himalayan pink salt lamp. And this is a piece of blue calcite. Uh, I chose this piece to be on my working altar more out of a color scheme sense because it matches this beautiful drop cloth, which I think is perfect for winter time. Um, but uh, yeah, that's mostly why it's there. And then we have the full, the waning gibbous, the uh, third quarter, and then the waning crescent moon phase tiles there. So yes, um, and then I have a cup of tea. And today is actually, this tea is the one from my David's Tea Advent Calendar. It's called Caramel Shortbread. 
and it is a fruit infusion, which typically I do not care for, but this one smelled amazing. So I'm just going to take a sip now. Oh, you guys, that is quite delightful. That one might actually need to be purchased. Oh, that is delightful. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're definitely purchasing that one. I think this one's going to need just a titch of honey just to sweeten up a little bit. Um, but other than that, this is fine on its own. I think I'm going to take the tea bag out after this and add just a smidge of honey just to sweeten it a tiny bit. And then we're going to call it perfect. All right, so I'll see you in a minute and I will show you how I store my decks. Hey guys, welcome back. Sorry for kind of the odd angle here, but this is about the best that I can do just um, as far as where my reading table is positioned in relation to my bed and stuff like that. Because, as some of you who've been here for a while remember, this reading table is in my bedroom. And let's not give them view of cat butt, okay, Tasha? Thanks, honey. Nobody wants to see your butthole. No, they don't. So, I, this side is the tarot side, and this side, which we'll get to in a couple minutes, is my uh, oracle deck side. I'm not going to go into all the decks that are in the collection. I'm just going to tell you a little about why we used this particular piece, and then how I've got it set up. So, this particular piece of furniture was a uh, TV stand that my husband and I bought. I, I'm going to say... It feels like it was only a year ago, but it was certainly more because uh, Emily was just a baby when we bought it and brought it home. Uh, and we did so because we wanted to get one that uh, uh, we could lock in some kind of way or that would just make it more difficult for her to get into the TV stand. And then when we moved here, we mounted our TV up on the wall and things like our Xbox and stuff like that went... Uh, on the mantle right next to the TV. So we really didn't need to have this anymore, but I really didn't want to get rid of this piece. I do like it quite a bit. Uh, it wasn't super terribly expensive or anything. We did buy it brand new, but it, it's obviously it's particle board with contact paper on top, but I just I really liked this piece and I wasn't ready to part with it. And it occurred to me that this would make an ideal reading table. Uh, it was just a little bit bigger than the coffee table that I had here um, in its place. The storage was better and more versatile. And um, I liked the fact that I could use these doors to kind of close it off to things like dust and the cats and things like that. And uh, of course, the dog has to walk right in front of the camera. Um, I can close it off to dust and dirt and cats and things like that. And yet it's also very easy to get to the decks and to get my hands on them, pull them out rather quickly. I can easily see no tucks. Go sit down. You're going to walk in front of the camera again. Sit. Down. Oh, tucks. Come on. Silly. Silly pop, right? Yeah, city pup. So anyways, I can see them quickly, I can get to them quickly, and uh, yet they are still in some ways out of sight, out of mind, so they're not staring you in the face, uh, but they're also not, um, uh, they're not completely hidden away, they're not difficult to get to, they're not in boxes somewhere or things like that, uh, bigger boxes anyways. So anyways, I'm quite happy with how this works. I have uh, a l couple of larger sets, <sighs> pardon me, on the bottom, as well as things like this old drawer where I've put some of my um, more narrow tarot decks that I can fit in it. This looks like an old drawer from like a library carding system. I know that several of my viewers are going to be old enough to remember the card files. Um, some of you may be going, huh? Don't, don't they use computers for that shit? Yeah, not always. <laughs> um, and then I have some decks and bags over here. The top shelf has um, other decks uh, in various stacks and rows and things like that. All the titles, uh, are for the most part, are visible so that they're easy to find, pick out, grab, etc. So that is that side. 
Then let's move you over to this side. Tux, move. Tux, move. Tux, move. This dog loves to be underfoot. So here is this side. Now this side currently is a wee bit messy, but that's okay. Um, there's a couple extra things up here that don't really need to be, so I'll put them away after. This really cool Urban Decay case that my latest uh, mascara and eyeliner came in, but I'm gonna repurpose for something else. Um, and then we have, uh, again, a bunch of Oracle decks up here, along with a box that holds several decks, as well as my runes in it. Uh, my husband made this box. And then down here, we have Oracle decks here and here, and then all of my tarot-specific books are here. So any books, or sorry, any decks that came with books, the matching companion books, with the exception of like little white books, which I have for the most part just chucked, uh, or recycled, I should say. They have specifically been recycled. They all stay here, the, the bigger books. Um, and then this is a beautiful wooden box that I found at a thrift store. One of the hinges uh, needs a new pin, but other than that, it's in great working shape. And has thus far held the uh, medicine cards that I have, but that's what this case is going to be for. Uh, I did not want to keep this for using makeup with because, well, I already had uh, a way of storing my makeup. But this seemed like the perfect solution for this deck. We're going to find out if it fits now. It's feeling a little bit tight, but I feel like it would still work. Yeah, it does. It's a wee bit tight, but I think that this material, like there's still room in here I can feel. I think it'll stretch out a little bit more over time and become more pliable and stuff. And this beautiful multi-chrome packaging, the, the green to purple, is just stunning. And um, it says hashtag troublemaker on the bottom, which I think is a little interesting. Um, but it just looks, I think, nice and compact in this. Um, and so, yeah, this is now going to go up in here. There we are. Fits wonderfully right up in there. And then I have a different purpose in mind for this box uh, that is not deck-wise. Um, and then I have an open box here for um, one of the Oracle decks, the Connected and Free, which is currently sitting on top of my altar being used. And then I have this deck, the Crystal Reading Cards, which is going to go back in. So I know where I had it before and where I'd like it to go again. And so it's just a pretty simple matter of just putting it back where it belonged and uh, keeping it all nice and organized. And then, yes, this empty box I'm just going to leave here. And then I have something similar to do over here because my Ostera Tarot is now sitting on my altar. And so the book is going to go back in the box. And I'm just going to leave it down here because it is going to go on the bottom here when it goes back away, uh, right up on top of the Egyptian tarot to be precise. So yeah, that is where I keep my decks. Um, and Tasha is walking up right now to go and leap in there. And I really, really don't want her to do that. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that little mini tour of my reading table. Oh yes, much better with the dash of honey. And so um, I thought I would then pull my cards for the day on camera as just a little bonus. You probably saw the decks in that last piece of footage. Um, 
the Ostera Terra was sitting on top of this uh, slab of fluorite. God, isn't that beautiful, you guys? Like, just stunning. Oh. Um, which I think looks a little bit like a coffin. You know, an oblong, oddly shaped coffin. But I think it's cool. So it goes back over to the side. And then I'm looking for another slab of a stone of some kind that I can put a working oracle deck on top of, either to put on the other side of the table or just right below it. Um, but I think it would be really cool to have a companion slab crystal on my deck. I've also tried to look for just plain uh, stones, like rocks, out in nature. Woo, I'm dropping cards everywhere. Um, and there is no rhyme or reason to it whatsoever, so I'm not going to call any of these uh, my cards for the day. Um, but then as I was trying to put this card back, it flung out at me again. So I'm going to call that my card for the day. And um, we have the sun, which I think is a beautiful message for the day. Um, it is raining cats and dogs outside, uh, not literally, but you guys know what I mean. And I really needed to hear the sun today. Um, I really needed to get that card. Uh, it's a nice little bright reminder that uh, difficult stages in life are always impermanent and it's uh, not something that lasts forever. And so it's something that I can very well cope with and move on from. And one day, things will be all nice and bright and sunny again. And I'm just shuffling my Alchemist Oracle here. Emily! Arrête, s'il vous plaît! And we have the base chakra. So together with the sun, I really feel like it's telling me that I need to kind of get back in touch with that inner fire, with that, you know, going back to the basics, stripping it back down to what things make me happy. And so what can I do to pursue those? And um, I won't tell you why, Right now, I feel the need to ask myself that question, uh, but do know that it is definitely relevant to me to what's going on in my life right now, and uh, that's going to give me a good um, a good base for some reflection, some journaling a little bit later on uh, this afternoon when there's a bit more peace and quiet going on in this house, because Lord knows there isn't much of that right now. <laughs> um, so anyways, I will probably check in with you guys uh, later on this evening. Uh, my husband and my friend are out at uh, a Vancouver Canucks game tonight. I'm very jealous, but in a good way, like in a very happy for them kind of way. So I'm going to stay home this afternoon and I'm going to watch the game from my own television at home and uh, enjoy myself immensely that way. And uh, I've got my two younger kids uh, home with me for now. The oldest is out um, doing some stuff today with a friend. And then um, she will be home just in time for dinner. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I'll get them ready for bed, uh, you know, in bits and pieces while the game is playing in the background. Do a little bit of knitting this afternoon uh, still, hopefully. And then, um, yeah, once uh, it's bedtime, it's off to bed with these guys. And then maybe a little bit of peace and quiet for Mama before she turns in for the night. So I'm going to go before my children kill each other, and I'll talk to you guys all very soon. Bye!